Hello everybody, Chris here, and in this video I'd like to give you 10 reasons why people choose to live alternative lifestyles. So getting right into it, first off, is a sense of adventure. When you live in the city or suburbs, and you just have those nice cozy homes, it's a, it's a fine life to live, you go to work, it's pretty boring, you probably come home, you watch hours of television and that kind of thing. But when you look at other types of lifestyles, like, um, for instance, living in a van or RV full time, or buying or even creating your own kind of home like a, um, a, a yurt or an earth bag home or maybe going to an eco village or something like that. Uh, those kinds of alternative lifestyles tend to be different. I mean, hence the whole idea of alternatives. So if people get really bored with where they're at in their current life, sometimes adventure is one of the reasons that they want to do that. Um, Going along with that, number two is to get away from it all. Uh, if you have a corporate job, you go work in the city, uh, it's the same thing day in and day out. Maybe you get promotions and that kind of thing, or maybe you run a business, and running a business is not a bad thing, of course. Um, but at some point in time, maybe you want to get away from it. And you don't just want to take a two-year vacation, but you want to make it a permanent lifestyle change because you're, you're sick of just living in the city, um, basically paying lots of money for rent, paying lots of money for taxes, and doing the same thing day in and day out. Um, so by choosing an alternative lifestyle, you can kind of not completely get away from it. I mean, you're still going to have obligations, of course, but um, maybe you can leave the city for a bit and go live kind of rule or something of that nature. So number three, uh, community. And this more applies to things like eco-villages specifically, or maybe uh, permaculture groups, which get together and uh, kind of share ideas with each other. But like many things in life, um, when you find other people who are doing the same kind of thing, it can be kind of easy to get a sense of camaraderie uh, with that. And since things like the tiny house movement, um, permaculture, living alternative lifestyles, uh, even RV or uh, van living is kind of uh, growing right now um, for various reasons. Um, it, it is possible to get that kind of sense of community. I mean, even on YouTube, if you go, uh, one thing I'd like to watch are all of these uh, van channels. That's something I may want to do one day. Um, and they're quite inspiring because you can see how other people are doing the same thing. And... Uh, kind of get a sense of how you can do that for yourself. And of course, you can take it a step beyond that and actually go talk to people. Um, yeah, community. It's not a bad thing. Okay, so number four, and this may be the biggest one and the most obvious as well, uh, money. So modern houses are pretty big. I, I think the average... Okay, I, don't quote me on this because I'm not 100% sure, but the average house for something in the 2000s in square foot that's being built these days, which is just a, a lot of space, it's unnecessary, and it costs a lot of money if you want to go ahead and buy a new house. Um, you can, I, I mean, I, of course, probably step down to something like trailer park, but then you start to pay rent and that kind of thing. Um, but there are ideas out there which are not particularly bad. You can see... Um, on, I believe it's the channel, Kirsten Dirksen, something along those lines. Uh, she posts all of these uh, documentaries where people talk about how they basically built their own homes at drastically discounted rates because they uh, use recycled resources or use techniques that um, really aren't accepted in mainstream conventional design as much. And yes, that may require you to not be like... Uh, in a typical suburb because of course zoning laws and permits and all of that uh, but if you can find the right space for it it's possible to save money doing that kind of thing and specifically with uh like van travel if you want to travel but you don't have a lot of money and you kind of want to do it for long term like maybe months and months or even years um, that's probably the cheapest way you can kind of comfortably do that <laughs> i mean unless you're gonna like hike everywhere, which would be pretty insane. Um, okay, so number five, simplify life. Um, it's easy to get caught up in the modern world of just uh, buying everything at the store and uh, basically accumulating a lot of junk you really don't need. And it's even easier to do that when you have a house that's way bigger than what you actually need. It's just like, well, there's storage space there and it looks kind of lonely there, so might as well go buy 
I don't know, a third television or something like that. Um, but if you look into ideas like uh, permaculture or homesteading, um, then in those cases it can become more about gardening and reconnecting with nature and that sort of thing, rather than just focusing on whatever is the latest trend going on in the cities, which could be fashion, it could be whatever the celebrities are doing, it could be what's the latest iPhone. Um, and by kind of getting away from that, um, you can find ways to simplify your life. Like you don't need all of that stuff and you don't need to pay attention to the news media really that much. Half of it's complete rubbish anyway, maybe more than that. That's kind of a conservative estimate. Um, yeah, so some people, they look at these alternative lifestyles as a way to simplify their life. Okay, uh, number six, focusing on family and kids. Going back to the whole idea of uh, basically working the standard 40 hours plus uh, per week lifestyle, especially when you have a uh, double family, uh, a double parent income, and you're trying to raise kids, it's, I mean, just based on time math, it's a lot harder to find time to really spend time with your kids uh, and go ahead and raise them. So, I mean, if you're career focused and you have a wife who's career focused or vice versa, oftentimes kids get put in daycare and that kind of thing. They get crammed into public school where they may not get a very good education. And uh, even worse, they get, may get kind of bullied a lot, um, not really learn to think for themselves because that's not really something that's taught there. Um, so if you wanted to do something like homesteading, um, I definitely wouldn't recommend like traveling all the time with kids. That's probably really unstable for them. But uh, something like homesteading, uh, maybe homesteading with permaculture principles and uh, cutting back your work hours by cutting back your expenses overall and maybe raising some of the food on your own land by yourself, like uh, have a large garden that maybe supplies 20% of your uh, food intake or something like that. Um, then not only can you show your kids useful skills, but you can also spend more time with them, uh, which may be more enjoyable for both parties than uh, basically working all the time and the kids get stuck in daycare and school. Uh, also, in addition to that, homeschooling or even unschooling are obvious companions to that. Um, maybe you want to teach your own kids rather than letting them go to school to be taught by someone else. Okay, so number seven, reconnecting with nature. Um, yeah, if you live in the big concrete cities, I know I'm in a concrete room right now, but yeah, if you live in uh, basically concrete buildings or even suburbs, you're really taken really far away from nature. And for the most part, that's a good thing because let's face it, uh, nature can be a little bit of a bitch. <laughs> Like if you go walk around the wetlands and you've been eaten by mosquitoes an entire day, um, you'll probably know what I'm talking about. Nature's not very forgiving. Um, but in, in other ways, reconnecting with nature, or at least the food you eat, uh, if you have your own garden, if you uh, maybe you live on several acres of land where you have a lot more forested stuff and, um, I, I don't know, maybe a blue, blueberry, blackberry patch that you can go harvest every now and then, or... Uh, maybe if you just want to have more animals around or a dog where previously like some apartments don't even allow that Then you can actually get a little bit more sense of what it traditionally meant to be human um, Of course, hopefully while Maintaining as many modern conveniences as you can because things like electricity and water are good and if you do want to have like a off-the-grid home, which we'll talk about in a second um, there can be a lot of upfront expenses with that, so it's not always the cheapest thing to go alternative. Okay, so number eight, conserving or reusing resources. Kind of as I mentioned on the money subject, um, one thing people like to do is to kind of build their own house or something like that, and they might not always have a huge amount of money to throw at the project, or even if they have the money, maybe they just want to do it using recycled resources or alternative materials. Um, so there are actually businesses in the U.S. and I imagine other countries right now where you can um, kind of just go in there. They're like a warehouse that disassemble, or I believe, has, with my understanding of it, uh, the companies 
um, basically take the salvage from uh, demolished homes, whatever is reusable, like windows, doors, wood, um, perhaps uh, appliances or metal, sheet metal, those kinds of things, and uh, provide them for resale. And the cool thing about that is not only are you saving a lot of effort for, I, I mean, I guess like the manufacturing industry by not having to produce an all new insert item here, but you can actually get pretty hefty discounts on them too. So if you like paying half money, half the price for your door or something like that, and it's basically 90, 95% as good as just buying a brand new one from the retailer, that may be a pretty cool alternative that you can use. And uh, I, I think that's something a lot of people can take pride in as well, uh, reusing resources like that. So number nine, uh, be independent. I think this goes hand in hand with the off-gridders a lot. Um, you know, in, in society, we really are dependent on the systems that we've all kind of set up for each other, like uh, power plants, electricity, um, having internet access. And don't forget, uh, internet requires cables to be run between pretty much everywhere right now. So if, you know, those get cut, you lose internet. And uh, water, of course, clean drinking water. That's really, really, really crucial. I mean, uh, if, if you can imagine what it would be like to, if like a city went without clean water for a few days, it would, it would probably be kind of not so great. And I don't want to scare people with this video, but I mean, there are real concerns in the world. Um, economy, just the, the way society is set up in general to be so interdependent. And if you want to be able to take those kinds of things into your own hands, where basically you feel fully in control of whether or not you and your family are going to have water or electricity this week, this month, this year, um, depending on how far you want to take it, going off grid is an option there. Because when you're off grid, um, basically, it's the systems that you have locally set up for yourself, like solar power or rain water collection, that are going to kind of determine, um, you know, if you can make it or not, and how well things are going to go for you. Now, obviously, living that kind of lifestyle is easy. It's not for everybody. Um, but to become more independent, maybe not going completely off the grid, but to kind of set up systems for yourself that will always be there as long as you take care of them is one reason that people like to get into things of that nature and permaculture as well and gardening just in general. Okay, so number 10, and uh, I, I guess I did kind of talk about this a little bit already, but the world is uh, pretty unstable right now. If you look at as much news as I do, there are some pretty dark things going on in the world. I mean, the whole Middle East situation, who hasn't heard about that? It's, uh, you know, not great. Refugees flying, uh, well, not flying, but like moving into uh, countries in the world and in some cases, not necessarily getting that well along with the local population. It's not hard. It's not easy to integrate with uh, people you haven't been around since basically childbirth. And um, yeah, a lot of political strife and things like that as well. And I'm not really being very specific here, but generally, I, I think if you're paying attention, you at least have some concerns about what's going on. I think. The, the most obvious example I can give right now is the uh, U.S. debt, or the debt of basically any country in the world. I mean, they're all running on uh, a fiat debt-based economy, um, and basically, if you're loaning out money at interest, there's never going to be enough money to pay it back because the amount owed is going to exceed the amount of money in circulation. But beyond that, like U.S., for instance, I think it's like $18 trillion debt, and... Uh, I, I don't trust them one bit to ever pay that off. So who knows what's going to happen with that? It's probably not going to be very good. So um, by taking things into your own hands a little bit, or uh, maybe setting up some systems or some accounts, like uh, basically having maybe gold or silver or that kind of thing on hand, uh, just as a backup or to kind of, what would be the word, like, Secure yourself a bit. So not just obeying whatever the mainstream media and society tells you to do can is probably going to be beneficial for you. If you can think for yourself and make your own decisions, whether that is going with one of these ideas like yurt living, van living, uh, homesteading, living off the grid, whatever it is, 
or it's coming to the same conclusions, but based on the facts you've researched for yourself. Um, kind of living more independently like that, thinking for yourself and being aware that the world is kind of unstable and, you know, may not necessarily stay the same. History definitely points to that. There's been a lot of changes, like all of the Soviet Union for one. Um, then yeah, that, that can be one way to live alternatively as well. And that is one thing a lot of people are concerned about right now. Um, so yeah, getting kind of tired, of course. I hope that gives you a really good sense of uh, 10 of the reasons why people sometimes choose to live alternative lifestyles. And I hope you enjoyed this video. So I've been Chris, thanks for watching. Uh, if you do want to donate or anything like that, you can find links to do so down below. And I'll see you in my future videos.